Hi guys, welcome back to book club. Um, I know it's very exciting because we did two in one week. Uh, we just had Haley on on Tuesday and now we're back with a very special book club because this is a book club that I did with headcount.org and Global Citizen and we did a giveaway um, where the winner of that giveaway would get to come on to book club as a guest and that is this one. So it's super exciting for me. Um, basically, I mean, I'm clearly wearing my I Voted sticker. I think voter turnout is so important this year. It's such a privilege. It's my first year being able to vote. So for me being able to go and do that today felt like an honor and a privilege. And I cannot tell you guys how important it is to do the same. Um, you know, if you've already voted, another really cool thing to do is text three of your friends encouraging them to vote if they can. That's called voter tripling and it's actually super effective. So we're still in this fight and um, election day is very soon, but don't stop encouraging people to vote because it's so important right now. So I am very proud of my I voted sticker. Um, and actually part of the giveaway was that the winner whose name is Kelly, who will be on here very soon, um, got to choose the book. So she chose the book Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. And that was really fun because I had actually never heard of Roxane Gay. I'd never heard of the book. So it was a really fun new experience for me to be able to read something new. Um, now I want to sort of give like a brief sort of background on the author who is Roxane Gay. She's a contributing opinion writer for the New York Times and she's written three books. Um, she's like a really celebrated um, social commentary writer, especially on women and on race issues. So the three books she's written are um, Bad Feminist, which we're doing today, Difficult Women, and the New York Times bestselling book called Hunger. So now that I read this book and I absolutely loved it and I'm so excited to talk about it, I'm like, I already ordered all her other books and everything she's ever written and I've done so much research on her because she's so brilliant. So I highly recommend her writing. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't give you guys a lot of time to read it, but you know, things have been a bit crazy, especially with election day coming up. So I still think that this will be a good book club to follow, even if you haven't read the book, because it, t it talks on so many issues that already, you know, are very prevalent in our culture today. So brief synopsis of the book. It was written in 2014. It's a collection of essays that explore what, you know, being a feminist means and sort of this idea surrounding a bad feminist and what that means. Um, and it deals with, you know, pop culture, politics, race, identity, and femininity, and kind of how the word feminism gets bad PR sometimes. Um, and, you know, she talks about this idea of movements that get bad PR, you know, whether it's feminism, Black Lives Matter, so many other ones. And I think it's, you know, she, the beginning of the book starts out being like, it's because people are leading these movements and we as humans are flawed. And I think sometimes the movements themselves end up taking the fall or the blame for the places that we as humans are flawed. And um, so she dives into that surrounding feminism and the feminist movement. And, um, you know, on a very simple level, feminism equals equality. It's not, we are better, we are this, it's just equality. And, um, Roxane Gay kind of explores everything in between. So before I bring Kelly on, I wanted to share just a few of my favorite quotes from the book uh, that I thought were really brilliant and that I wrote down. Um, and then we will talk about it, which is so fun for me. Like it's so, this is such a cool opportunity and the, the fact that, you know, I get to encourage people to vote even for the first time alongside me when this is my first year, like it just feels like such a privilege. Um, we don't know what's gonna happen, but like, I will never stop fighting um, for what I believe is right. And I know that so many young people feel the same. So I'm gonna read a few quotes from Roxane Gay. I openly embrace the label of bad feminist. I do so because I am flawed and human. I cannot tell you how freeing it has been to accept this about myself. I embrace the label of bad feminist because I am human. I am messy. I'm not trying to be an example. I am not trying to be perfect. I'm not trying to say that I have all the answers. I'm not trying to say that I am right. I'm just trying, trying to support what I believe in, trying to do some good in this world. 
I loved that. And then she said another one that says, the thing about fairy tales is that the princess finds her prince, but there's usually a price to pay. A compromise is required for happily ever after. The woman in the fairy tale is generally the one who pays the price. I also found that um, so true and something that isn't always talked about. And so the fact that she kind of just stated it very plain and simple made me feel um, like a lot of people don't recognize that from when we're a very young age, especially when we're young girls, we are sort of, these ideas are put into our minds that we are meant to give something up or sacrifice something to be happy. And um, that's not always the case. So I like that she talked about that. Uh, now, without further ado, I would love to bring Kelly on so we can talk about this. Hi. <laughs> Thank You're you so, so nice. much for coming on here. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is my first Instagram It makes Instagram me so pod. happy. It is? Yeah. So if I Okay, well, my, my first book club was also my first Instagram live, um, and I was terrified. But then I think after, like, two minutes, you forget that people are watching, and it just feels like you're, like, FaceTiming someone. So hopefully it's not terrifying. <laughs> I've actually never even done a book club either. So like I have like notes and like everything because I don't know the proper structure with all that. I always and, have notes too. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a psychopath. I have like three notebooks and I underline like my friends that are going to borrow the book after me are going to hate me for it. So, um, That's so great though. That's to me the most fun about doing book club is it like kind of forces me to dissect the book in a way that normally I wouldn't. And I always keep notes and notebooks and pull things and like, I'm really keeping an eye out for stuff. So it's so cool that you did that. I'm so glad that like, you really committed to this. Yeah, well, I've heard about Roxanne Gay before. Um, mm -hmm. I actually just did like an Adobe creative class and she was a speaker there and it was super inspiring. And I've had mm -hmm. a couple friends that like uh, recommended the book. So I'm like, oh my God, I can't like misquote anything or, you know, just like <laughs> represent. Yeah, you're like, I'm like, yeah. The that pressure's is on. Queen, please. Yeah, no, I'm so happy you chose her, though, because I had never heard of her before. And I don't know if I would have ever, like, come across this book. So I'm so grateful because, like, now feels like the most perfect time to read this book, actually. Yeah, it's been kind of crazy, too. I love how it's organized. Also, too, with essays. It's just so simple mm -hmm. to, like, um, just, like, open, read, close it. And a lot of the subjects mm -hmm. are a bit heavy. So it's kind of nice having mm -hmm. that like option where it's like, okay, like, yeah, you can like read an essay, <laughs> put it down, think about it for a bit. And then, yeah, you know, go back to it. Yeah, totally. So yeah, I'm super glad you picked it with me. So yeah, well, I mean, you picked it. So I'm well, so I'm so grateful. Thank you for recommending it. And what made you choose this book? Was it like, having heard Roxanne speak? Was it just how many people recommended it to you? Or it Personally, it was just a combination of both. And um, I was really like thinking about all the books I've read during quarantine and none of them necessarily have subjects that are parallel to that. Um, mm -hmm. Like admittedly, like I used to think like the word feminist means like anti-males and like all this like right. stigma yeah. that you were talking about earlier. And that's totally not true. And I love that she just made things so relatable and like the pulp culture references and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's super easy um, and digestible. Yeah, because I, I agree. I think the word, you hear the word feminist sometimes. And even I, when I was younger, I was like, well, I don't want to be called a feminist because I'm not angry at men and I'm not, you know, anti-men and I, I want everyone to be equal. And I didn't know that feminism meant equal. I thought it was like this battle and it felt like this really like mean word that was almost used as an insult to, towards women. Um, exactly. So immediately, like within the first chapter of the book, you're like, understands why, you know, being called a feminist sometimes sounds like an insult and she's like here to basically like ease our minds that it's not. Yeah, and I like that she like phrased it too, where it's just like, you know, it is like a movement by people and we're just as human squad. And so like, mm -hmm. at times we will contradict ourselves or ideas evolve and things change. So there's not like a book or like a set rule where it's like, if you're a feminist, you have to like do X, Y, and Z or, or discounting the whole movement. Exactly, 100%. And what, what does the word feminism mean to you? To me, it's just advocating for women's rights, equality. Mm -hmm. um, 
to keep it pretty short, um, Roxanne, like, mentioned a really good thing, like, I guess maybe in, like, 2014, like, just all the people that were writing about feminism were just very, um, a certain, like, class demographic, and it just ex excluded mm -hmm. a lot of people. Right. And for me now, like, as I'm slowly, like, understanding the concept of feminism and just hearing more outlooks, like, kind of see it, the overall parallel is just fighting for the right to be considered equal to men. Mm -hmm. uh, 100%. It's not better, like, it's equal. Um, and I agree, I, I kind of think that it's been looked past that, like, the feminist movement excluded a lot of people, especially in the beginning. Um, and Roxanne really touches on that kind of right away, being like, it has to be all women, including, you know, trans women and Black women and Latinx women. And it's like, um, it's so important, I think, to remember that a movement, like, it can't exclude people. Um, and oftentimes, like, the feminist voice and leaders were sort of creating a very narrow um, group of women. Yeah. And not to discount any of those opinions, um, mm -hmm. it's just, like, the narrow you know idea where it's like oh like you know just stay at home forever and like just depend on your husband and all these like mm -hmm. ideas are not necessarily attainable for a lot of people yeah no and what do you think of this concept of like being a bad feminist like have you ever considered yourself a bad feminist i totally do um mm -hmm. <laughs> there's like a whole paragraph where roxanne was just talking about like I like pink and I want to say I like black and I want, you know, like I watch mm -hmm. these like fringy TV shows and like, mm -hmm. I have no interest in learning on how to fix my car, you know, right. and that doesn't discount the whole movement at all. Yeah. Um, and I like totally agree with that and yeah. like, classify myself that way for sure. hundred percent me too, where I'm like, I totally am a feminist and I believe women are equal to men and should receive equal pay for the same jobs, which doesn't still sometimes doesn't happen, which is crazy to me. But yeah, I, I don't I also think that, you know, within this movement of feminist and feminism, you're almost like a little bit scared to ask for help or say, you know what? No, like I like girly things or I, I want to wear a dress sometimes or I want to cook dinner and like feel empowered by that. Um, and it's also like still try and be a feminist and feel empowered by doing things that maybe aren't considered along like the guidelines of being a good feminist. Yeah. And I think it's also too so strange where it's like, okay, I want to have the right to say of what happens to my body, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean like I have to give up the fact that I like to shave my legs or, you know, yeah. like that I like to wear dresses and all these yeah. things are like a hundred percent. Yeah, and that, like, the crazy idea that maybe we do it for us and not for men, you know? It's like, maybe I shave my legs for me, and I'm wearing this dress for me. Um, and sometimes it's like, well, that's not possible, so you must not be a feminist, because you must be doing all of this to, like, please men. And so I think that's, like, finding that balance that I didn't really know existed for a long time. Exactly. And I feel like also, too, like, sometimes people think with, like, feminism, it's like, oh, okay, like, you're wanting to take away from men and it's like oh like you know mm -hmm. like you have like the freedom to do like whatever it's just like I want the choice to you know like do whatever I want to do 100 percent, yeah and it's not it's not this sort of like overcompensation it's just like equality and that's what feminism at its core really means so I think it's like important to remember that and I think Roxanne really understands that concept oh yeah yeah um, I was going to ask you, what was your favorite essay? I was going to ask you that too. <laughs> um, honestly, like so many, I loved so many of them. I think like when she talks about trigger warnings, I that really resonated with me because she's basically like when they're using excess, it kind of feels like they're limiting what they think you can handle or what you can take. And it starts to feel like censorship, especially for women and um so I really liked the essay where she was talking about trigger warnings and how she feels almost a bit like they're controlling. Yeah, I thought um, that was a really interesting perspective because I thought yeah. like, she would be like so pro trigger warning and then mm -hmm. it was the complete opposite. And that was yeah. really refreshing to me.
Yeah, and I've never thought of trigger warnings as a sort of censorship. But also, I think, like, especially after this election, I've learned how the media can, like, censor and really sort of skew um, the news that you're being fed. And so reading that, like, alongside this election and everything that's been going on with the media, I really felt like, you know, that is a really interesting perspective and that it is sort of a censorship and, like, almost a controlling what information we get. Um, so, yeah, I found that. What was your favorite essay, though? Um I think my like top one, I have two, but my very top one is the one about becoming friends with women. And mm -hmm. it was more like a list, but like there were so <laughs> many topics that I just like really related to um, mm -hmm. that I like literally, it took me forever. It was like three pages and it took me so long to read it because I kept pausing just you're like things of <laughs> my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, I like the overall theme of just like, reflecting on yourself because um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes like we're just like automatically like oh we're like great like I don't need to like change anything about myself or like it's all these other people and it was it's just easier like there to blame other people always yeah, yeah. and like yeah. there's so many of them where it was like at the end of it it was like you need to do some soul searching and I think mm -hmm. sometimes that like tough love is like ideal 100 um, yeah I had a friend one time like I, when I was younger, I thought it was, like, cool to be, like, mean and, like, I'm, like, a gr guy's girl, you know, like, that mm -hmm. whole thing. It's just so dumb. But um, mm -hmm. anyways, like, I had a friend that I was trying to, like, rant to her about or, like, make fun of, like, a random person. I don't even know what I was saying. But she, like, just stopped and looked at me and was, like, um, like, who hurt you? And <laughs> her saying that, I was, like, oh, my God, no one hurt me. Like, yeah. I, like, I, like. I've never was put in my place. Like, you know, yeah. I just had, like you run with a mean girl circle, you know? So I was just like, Oh my God, no one hurt me. And like, I had no response. And then she was just like, okay, like the world's so unkind. Like, why are you adding to it for like zero reason? Like, That's not such a good point though. That's such yeah. a good valid point. Cause it's, yeah, it's so true. And like, you think so many times we justify our actions by being like, it's everyone else. There's no way it's me. It's everyone else in the world. Um, and you almost exclude yourself from these like generalizations. You're like, well, yeah, some, most girls do that, but I don't like, you always yeah. think they're talking about like everyone else and that you're excluded from it. And it's so true. Like there's so much unkindness in the world, especially like there's when I find when women are mean to other women, like women already face so much every day from men. So for other women to like come for women and, um, and add to that is so beyond me because it's like yeah. we're trying to tell everyone that we're equal but we're not even treating each other as equal so that's where it starts to me is like women have to set the example of how we're supposed to treat each other and how we're like we deserve to be treated yeah literally and like for me i like just like after that i like kind of just like woke up and like all my actions now i'm just like oh my God, like, okay, I'm gonna make sure like I'm being as positive as possible. And if I mm -hmm. think anything, I'm like keeping it internally because it's like, you don't know what people are going through, you know, like right. um, she like mentions like privilege and there's just like all these different aspects. Like you just have no idea. So it's just like to be positive or to be um, more kind is so ideal and necessary and it's just so dumb to be like negative about yeah like it doesn't it just doesn't help anything especially when like there's so many battles to be fought every day it's like don't contribute to it i think that's such a good perspective 100 percent. yeah um, but it's just, yeah and you talk about like this anything. yeah and you talk about this idea of like privilege and how she her take on recognizing your privilege um and what what do you privilege mean to you and like how do you grapple with it because she sort of says you know it's not even necessarily about um owning up to it or trying to like compensate for it it's just about like recognizing places that it has affected you and that it might affect other people yeah um i recognize the fact i have privilege i'm there's so many reasons i don't even want to like list but mm -hmm. like it's like really important to acknowledge that you have privilege, understand the effects of your privilege, the consequences mm -hmm. of your privilege to other people and your opportunity mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, like I, you know, feel comfortable doing X, Y, and Z and you yeah. don't because of your like situation, whatever. Like, 
um, it's really important to like express that you're like an ally and do what you can to make a change. Right. Cause it's, yeah, she's almost like, she says something about, you know, you have to understand the extent of your privilege. Um, and also about trying to like level the playing field for everyone and um, do what you can because, you know, there are so many people who are privileged and there are so many people who are not privileged. And if the people with privilege are not working extra hard to level that playing field and to, you know, kind of make things better, it's like things will never get better. And I liked her, I really liked her take on privilege because I thought, you know, it was like a really refreshing way to sort of talk about it. And, and um, she kind of like hit the nail on the head, so. Yeah, I, it made me think about like, just like certain situations I've had in my life where like, I like acknowledge the fact I have like privilege, but I just like didn't necessarily like work, you know, to like make a difference or like take a stand. Like, mm -hmm. for example, um, I'm pro like LGBTQ. And mm -hmm. I thought it was like the best ally ever. I volunteered for Florida Quality, um, which is a nonprofit mm -hmm. in Florida. And like, mm -hmm. like, I thought like everything, I don't know, was like, okay, like, um, gay marriage is like legal, like, that's the end of that battle. And there's yeah. so much more. And, uh, when, yes. I when I volunteered, like, first, it was my first time ever, like, confirming like my like preferred pronouns and I didn't realize how like important that was and like mm -hmm. you know just like knowing all these like systematic like laws that are put in place that like just like ruin an experience for um certain people mm -hmm. and I like had no idea until I actually spoke to people about it and they expressed to me like uh yeah like things aren't like homophobia is not over girl like no. wake up and like you know like the right actions so it's like voting and writing letters to people in congress and like mm -hmm. um you know stopping like microaggressions within your own community and there's just so many ways that like we can acknowledge our privilege and also to work on it and it's just really important to mm -hmm. follow through with that practice it yeah. yeah, and I think that's why it's so important to first recognize your privilege because that's like the first step and then you can do all of these things and especially right now when like the safety of so many of these people, especially within that community, is being threatened and is very up in the air and they don't feel protected by our democracy. That's when we have to fight the most and that's when we have to do all of these things. Like you've listed so many incredible things that you can do and it's like, if we don't feel like our government is protecting the people within it, then like that's when the people have to do it and that's when the people have to really like hold the people in your community. Even if you're not, if you don't identify within that community, you, it's still up to you to help and to do what you can. And that's why voting right now, to me, it's like, voting is the most urgent thing that's right in front of me that I know I can do to like ensure the safety of these people. And that's why like that to me is so important. Yeah, I wanted to say too, thank you for posting that link about checking your registration. Because <laughs> like just having a swipe up and like having all the resources that like headcount and everyone has to like put together mm -hmm. has made things so much easier. And it's like- It really has, social media has made, I think voting so much easier because I didn't realize how difficult it actually can be for people. And um, there's so much to learn too. There's so many different props. And that was something to me that I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't versed myself on any of these props. And so being able to like go online and have like these very specific links that people give, that's like how I learned so much during this election. And um, no, I'm, I'm just grateful that people have provided these like super easy things to do to make sure that you're registered. Cause that was, when I saw that I was like, I need to like double check if I'm registered. And I checked like seven times because I was like, I need to make sure. <laughs> yeah, I've been like super crazy about it. Someone like stole my ballot and I've been like checking like every day to like see the status of like, say request a new one, send it out again. Like just been like super crazy to like preach like, oh, like, you know, like we need to like do actions and blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. And then another thing of actually doing it. And it's just so much easier when people like you that have a platform are expressing that and Aww. doing their best. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I 
I, I'm like so excited to vote. And I also think it's a common misconception on social media that it's like, you can post a story and that's where your efforts stop. And like, for me to see people really practicing what they preach and really, you know, it's like one thing to post about a charity and spread awareness that's so great. But then when I see those people like really out there, like with the whole BLM things, I I found like the people who were posting and then I would see them at the protests. Like those were the people that I really felt like you're lending your platform, but you're also lending your mind and your body to the things that you care about. And that to me is like where true honor is. And um, I respect those people so much and I've like have great examples around me. So I always like want to do what I can and like over every facet. I think social media is like one great one, but you know, voting is like equally like sending your mail-in ballot is like equally as important or more important than like, you know, the other things. So I think that's things. Yeah. And it's crazy how many rules there are with that. And it's so nice to have all those like resources and stuff. Yeah. I've learned so much. It's like taking a master class in voting this election. Unfortunately, like it takes the world pretty much being like in shambles to learn, but, um, I think like this has been such a learning opportunity for so many people because we basically have got forced to because like there is no you can't be ignorant about what's happening anymore it's like life and death for a lot of people yeah it's insane um Mm -hmm. in regards to just like all that um and like obviously like media has like played a lot of like parts with that and um Mm -hmm. there's like a really good portion of the book where Roxanne talks about like um just victims of Mm -hmm. like sexual abuse etc and just the Mm -hmm. way like how things are framed in society where it's like automatically putting um the victim down where it's like oh no you should be putting the person that actually like did something and I wanted to know Mm -hmm. your thoughts on that she like mentioned how like instead of it being like rape culture it should be like rapist culture um, yeah so your opinion I I loved I actually pulled a quote from that essay because I thought it was like super important and sort of how she she talks about rape and rape culture and the fact that it's even called rape culture and I think there's so much surrounding victim blaming especially with the media and like this sort of bandwagon effect and I think it can be so scary to talk about personal experiences especially as a woman when throughout history women haven't been believed a lot of the time and I think we've made so much progress and I think it's amazing but I also think that doesn't discount for all of the women who are still too afraid to talk who have spoken and who have been just torn apart by something that already can tear someone apart and I think it's so heartbreaking to me that like as a culture we've made so much progress and then you still have this like something being called rape culture and they end up talking about what the woman did and what we as women can do to not ask for it and it's like why don't we talk about what men can do and what people can do to not you know do these horrible actions and like take responsibility it's like a huge accountability thing for me and I think that it lacks that um and Roxanne talks about that around like victim blaming yeah, I thought um, her example, there was like the gang rape thing. And it was just like <laughs> all focused on the males. And it's like, oh, like, how are they gonna like move on past this? And it's like, like, what about the girl? That, like, that yeah, like, them? it's so insane to me. Um, I have Twitter. So and there, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say I have Twitter. And so like, I'm pretty like, on top of it with like, news articles and stuff like that and I like Mm -hmm. love seeing the responses because there's a lot of times reporting where it's like the innocent person they have their mug shot up and then like the person that actually did whatever crime is just like it's like a beautiful senior it's like a beautiful portrait it's like their high school picture and you're like it makes and oftentimes it's it's so crazy to me and it's oftentimes like the minorities where it's easy for them to take a story and spin it because of the way that somebody has been treated in the past. And, um, and it's this idea of like minorities and then people with privilege. And that comes like across, I think, 
on a lot of different facets, facets, but especially with this idea of, yeah, that gang rape that Roxanne talks about and how these men were painted basically like, how will they ever get past this and maybe they'll never get jobs. It's like, do you really want these people in your workplace? How about like this woman who has been horribly affected for the rest of her life? And um, yeah, it's just crazy the way that media, the media and people spin stories still. Yeah, like, um, every time she, like, mentioned media, I just thought it was um, pretty, like, eye-opening, just because all of her examples are so specific, and, like, she wrote this book in, like, what, 2014, and I feel like it's mm -hmm. probably even worse now, like, mm -hmm. so insane. Mm -hmm. I think social media helps in so many ways, but it also has, you know, caused us to take a few steps back in certain ways, so I think, like, when she wrote this, it wasn't nearly as bad or at least as sort of amplified as it is now um you know and she talks about like healing and survival and resilience and that's like in the essay what we hunger for what are your thoughts on that when she talks about um like healing and survival especially with women well to start off i've never watched the hunger games before so <laughs> i that part i was like a little bit confused about but <laughs> Um, I like the idea overall about like healing in your own way and your own time frame. And it's right. like, you know, like, you can't discount people for taking longer to, you know, come back from trauma or if they have trauma for the rest of their lives. Like there's just <laughs> so many factors to consider. And uh, that was like my main like takeaway where it's just like, you know, if, like someone wants to have that title of a survival or sur um, survivor or victim, you mm -hmm. know, like allow them to identify themselves that way and allow them to mm -hmm. heal whenever they feel comfortable. Right. I think it's, it's like, it's not up to us to decide how somebody is going to heal and process something. And I think oftentimes society thinks that because we have the ability to comment on everything, that means that we should. Um, and I very strongly disagree with that because I think there are certain personal experiences, especially that women and people in minorities go through that aren't for people to decide how they handle those experiences because they're so personal to those people. Yeah, and um, just going back to like everything we've been talking about, it's just like so many people have different backgrounds and different privileges and there's just like, mm -hmm. there's no right way to deal with anything because we're all so flawed and life is just different yeah you know? and have you have you read 50 shades of gray or the twilight series or have you seen them because i know she talks a lot about those <laughs> and i like found that okay. section so interesting because i have i've seen both of them so okay so i've never read the books but mm -hmm. um recently i watched all of the twilight series <laughs> however when i watched it we played this drinking game and it was like Every time, like, Robert said something, like, problematic or there was mm -hmm. something that Controlling. was, like, supposed to be, a comp like, a compliment, but it was actually gaslighting. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, <laughs> we pretty much just, like, took her commentary and drank to it. So, like, I never had the perspective where it's, like, you know, like, this fairy tale or, like, the right. I, like, I just saw that aspect of it. It was so never it was romanticized in your mind. Yeah, and honestly, like, I have, like, the worst, like, dating history and just, like, the worst type ever, so it was, like, really funny to watch it with my friends because they have, like, totally different lifestyles and the things mm -hmm. that they were, like, saying were, like, red drink, and I, I had no idea, so I cannot even imagine if I, like, read the books or, like, anything of that nature. Right. Yeah, I mean, I watched it at a really young age, so I didn't really understand, like, what a controlling man looked like and what the red flags were and what you know what it handles and I also don't think the book really understands that it's talking about that um but then having like gone back and done more research about it like after being in relationships and after sort of understanding more about what a controlling relationship looks like those books and those movies are very problematic um because it doesn't and most fairy tales in general don't give like young girls any example of the fact that they're in control um, of their destiny at all. So I, I actually like upon watching it again, it's like you do feel 
I felt bad for like the version of me that watched it and thought it was a love story. Yeah. I have a similar reaction to 500 Days of Summer. <laughs> and... I've actually never seen that. Everyone says I need to watch that, but I've never oh, seen you it. Need, you need to watch it. But I thought it was like a love story. And I hated the male character because I just saw it in a toxic way as like a teen. Mm -hmm. And then watching it now, I'm like, oh my God, there was like all these unrealistic expectations and like this all this like gaslighting and just like, you know, all these things I totally miss because I like never personally like experienced that or I right. was, um she like talk uh, Roxanne talks about like watching TV or reading books where you're like trying to identify with the character and like for me I like originally we never identified with them so I was just like oh my god this is like a love story this is great and now yeah, you're just like that's other people's experiences and I also think it's so scary that you look back and like these ideas of gaslighting and controlling they're all introduced to us before the actual word for it is and before we know that it's bad so like we're very desensitized to it I think as young women and men that that's something that we just have to deal with and that not even that it's bad that that's just something that is part of our life um you know and and Roxanne also talks about like she talks about not being able to identify with certain characters and people in that's that are portrayed um but also same with feminists like that not everyone can find like a feminist leader that they feel like they can fully connect to um did you feel like that or did you feel like you had someone that you really were like uh, as a feminist sort of leader an example i like really related to the fact of like not relating um mm -hmm. just because like in like my like entire life i never watched shows like thinking like oh this like family dynamic is similar to mine like i just mm -hmm. never had that mindset and like yeah. even now i like i would recently watch all the sex in the city um episodes and watch both movies and still at the end of doing all that which was several hours I could not <laughs> pick a character that I related to mm -hmm. which is like so insane I had to do a BuzzFeed quiz to figure out who I was and like, <laughs> I've done so many of those and I never feel like they're right either I'm always like mm, but I'm not um and I feel the same I never really felt like yeah I don't think anyone really has like an exact version of them that they can fully um relate Oh, yeah, and then, um, Roxanne also mentions, too, like, there's all these characters that, like, you know, they, like, are revolting from, like, the social norm, or, you know, like, they're, like, made to seem like the bad guy, and it's, like, automatically, like, we're just, like, discounting that character, because mm -hmm. it's, like, oh, that person's supposed to be, like, you know, the anti-hero, like, they yeah. shouldn't be good, and it's, like, well, what if yeah, I, It's, like, like, the antagonist, so we're never gonna relate to the antagonist of a story. Yeah, but it's also, too, yeah. like, what if they have characteristics, characteristics that are, like, similar to me, and I identify with them, like, what does that mean about me? <laughs> like, I know, you know, then you're, like, am I an anti-hero in my life? Am I an antagonist? And I, I totally agree. I think it's, like, yeah, it's such an interesting point. I love that she, like, wrote an essay about that, because I thought that was so interesting. Yeah, and I just really liked how she, like, mentioned, like, if you're reading a book to, like, gain a friend from, like, a character, you're reading the wrong, like, book. Or you're, like, not reading correctly, essentially. Right. Because, like, right. you shouldn't be related to something like that. Yeah. Um, so, like, someone else shouldn't I thought that be was like, interesting. And telling you how, who you are, basically. Someone's not going to, like, write the character of who you are in your life and... I like that she that she spoke on that. And I wanted to ask you because election day is coming up. Um, have you made your plan to vote? Are you voting by mail? Are you voting in person? So I voted by mail a awesome. second time because my ballot got stolen. <laughs> um, so and yeah, it was like literally the most insane. I've never voted by mail before. So like, you know, like, took time to, like, make sure my signature was, like, the exact same as, like, my license, like, dated everything mm -hmm. correctly, like, took time to read everything, like, um, and then, yeah, it got stolen, and, of course, I'm, like, so crazy about this selection, particularly, so I was, like, tracking it, and I had to request the whole thing, but, yeah. Yeah, um, well, it's so important that it was so, that, you know, you took responsibility for, it because I, unfortunately, like, I think there are a lot of people where that would happen to them, and they're, like, 
oh, okay. Like, I'm not going to go through the problem of doing the whole process again. So the fact that, like, it, it matters that much, too, is so important because every vote is just, like, so crucial so right important. now. <laughs> it's so important. And I'm, like, so happy that I, I went in person because it's my first time. I just about and um, do it safely. But I'm just, like, really... I think it's such a privilege to vote, and I'm so happy that you did it, and that I did it, and I hope that everyone watching this did it. Um, and I, I think it's like pushing and pushing until election day. Yeah, just literally coming up so fast, and all my friends, I'm making a habit to ask, like, so did you vote yet? Like, mm -hmm. didn't see your Instagram post, or like that makes such I'm a difference. Doing though. Friendly it's check in. <laughs> Huge. I mean, this whole idea of voter tripling, like, if you think about it, if everyone texts three friends, that triples the amount of votes. That is huge. And especially, you know, like, texting people that you know who are in different states. And um, if you can turn a state like that is, you know, essential for getting an election that an election that we actually can be proud of and that we want. And um, I'm so grateful to you for being on here and for showing me this book. I'm like about to read everything that Roxanne has ever written. Yay, I'm excited. Well, awesome. it was so nice to meet you. Um, and thank you for being on here. Thank you for having me. Have a great weekend. Have a wonderful Friday. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Again, I cannot stress this enough, and I know you've seen it everywhere. But please, please, please vote if you can. It's such a privilege. Um, I just, I, I will talk about it until election day. So if you're annoyed, I'm very sorry. But this is life and death for some people. And it's also an honor to be able to vote. I did it. So have a good weekend and vote and tell your friends to vote. <laughs>